Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. AMA Expo East starts tomorrow. Raleigh, North Carolina Parks Committee reconsiders its drone proposal. And Pilot says drone caused him to crash his helicopter. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world with more than 195,000 members and 2,000 forager clubs across the country. Don't forget the annual AMA Expo East starts at the Meadowlands Exposition Center in Secaucus, New Jersey tomorrow through Sunday, February 23rd through 25th. The three-day expo will provide new and seasoned hobbyists of all ages with hands-on opportunities to learn about building and flying model aircraft and drones. This includes flying demonstrations, FPV drone racing with the AMA Flight Simulator and more. AMA Expo East will also include Homeschool Day on Friday, February 23rd. During this day, homeschool students will have a chance to experience RC flight simulators, try model and drone flying, watch RC boat demos, and more. AMA Expo East will also include nearly 100 exhibitors, aviation and aerospace experts, as well as a featured speaker series. The full schedule is available at amaexpo.com. Free admittance to this event is offered for kids 12 and under, uniformed girl and boy scout, active military personnel with valid ID, Navy Sea Cadets, and Civil Air Patrol. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shortest stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. The AMA has been active in counseling state and local governments. They have engaged with members of the Pitt County, North Carolina Council to reduce the burden of a proposed countywide UAS ordinance. In Hawaii, AMA submitted official testimony in opposition to proposed Senate Bill 2160 in Hawaii, which has been deferred in committee. In Mississippi, a potentially problematic bill which would have given Mississippi the authority to regulate the operation of unmanned aircraft died in committee. And in Utah, AMA contacted Senate committee members in Utah concerning the House Bill 59, which accepted AMA's recommended changes. More than 1,200 Intel Shooting Star drones made history for the Olympic Winter Games in Pyeongchang 2018 opening ceremony, with the Winter Olympics' first-ever drone light show that also set a Guinness World Record title for the most unmanned aerial vehicles airborne simultaneously. The world record flight was pre-recorded for the event. Viewers from around the globe were treated to a record-breaking light show during the opening ceremony, utilizing 1,218 of the aircraft that surpassed Intel's previous record of 500. The Henderson County Fiscal Court has approved an agreement between the county and the Henderson RC Airplane Club that will result in the region's first purpose-built drone park and obstacle course. The Gleaner reports that the agreement outlines the responsibilities of both parties in building and maintaining the facility, which will be located at Sandy Lee Watkins Park. The project is expected to cost about $5,000. In response to the Transportation Safety Board's recently released report on the alleged October 2017 in-flight collision between a commercial passenger-carrying aircraft and a drone near Quebec's John Lesage International Airport, the Airline Pilots Association International recently sent a letter to Transport Minister Mark Garneau, calling on Transport Canada to ensure that the soon-to-be-released unmanned aircraft system regulations provide for the safety of all users of Canadian airspace. That was our Drone Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. The Raleigh, North Carolina Parks Committee is looking at a revised drone policy that could allow small UAVs to be flown in almost all of the city's public parks. The new policy approved by the Raleigh Parks Committee and moved on to the Full Parks Recreation and Greenway Advisory Board would allow any UAV weighing less than 400 grams to be flown in any city park that is not designated as a nature preserve, nature park, wetland center, or lake. Larger drones would be limited to six parks and can be flown only in large open spaces. 
The first draft of the policy would have limited drone operations to seven parks, placed altitude restrictions on drones, and banned the use of cameras to capture imagery of private property. While drone supporters turned out in fairly large numbers for a discussion of the first draft of the policy, there were only a few in the audience this time around. The final draft of the drone policy sets out that drone racing is limited to aircraft weighing less than 1.7 pounds, including propellers, and drone race courses may not use trees as obstacles. Violators would be asked to leave the park or have their flying privileges revoked. While the details seem pretty sketchy, a small drone is being blamed for the crash of a light two-place helicopter. But we're not sure we believe it. The accident occurred in the southern portion of Daniel Island, near North Charleston, South Carolina, last week. And the instructor pilot says he was maneuvering to avoid collision with a drone when the accident occurred. The helicopter instructor told police that he was flying an R-22 helicopter owned by Holy City Helicopters on an instructional flight. He said they were flying low over undeveloped land on the island, and the student was practicing a maneuvering when they saw a white DJI Phantom quadcopter drone heading into their airspace. The instructor said he took control to avoid the drone, but his tail boom struck some brush or a small tree which caused him to lose control and roll over at impact. Neither person on board was injured, but the helicopter was declared a total loss. Neither the drone or its operator has been located. The FAA would only confirm that the accident had occurred, but had no further information to provide. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program are daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.